Hey guys, Josh Nick here, and um, today I, I've, I've kind of like been wanting to do this for a while, uh, this sort of tutorial, but I just could never have been bothered to do it. Um, basically, it's motion tracking and After Effects again, but um, my my um, my t my last tutorial on it was um was like ages ago, and it was on the uh, like the built-in tracker for After Effects C CS5 and 5.5. We put like your little tracking points and stuff down, but um, um, I've, I still get people asking me how I do it, which is kind of odd. Because for me, it's it it you don't it's like one of the easiest things to do I reckon in After Effects. Basically, all you need to do is get your your, your cinematic, put it in there, make sure it's all all good and stuff, and then you just want to right click and go track camera, and that'll basically track the camera. But because this is a uh, tutorial, I'm only gonna use just a portion of this track purely because it's going to take forever if it wants to um if we want to track the uh, entire thing because this is actually a, a PNG sequence or something because it's uh, a PC cinematic so uh, basically you just right click go track camera and that's just going to track it and there's all these other settings here which um, I guess you could play around with them if you want but I don't really see any need to like with COD, but um, yeah, this that's just um, this is how I see it. But it's there's nothing really necessary to change or muck around with. The only thing is maybe the target size or the track point size, but that that doesn't actually affect your actual tracking. It just it just shows um bigger track points when you want to select track points and stuff. So uh, it's gonna solve the camera. That doesn't take too long. And now nothing, nothing's happening. Nothing looks um, any different. But if you click on the 3D camera tracker in there, all these points show up. And if you if you put your mouse over it, um, this little like bullseye target sort of thing will show up. And it basically shows um, like sort of like the plane on um, three different points sort of thing. So like if you see here, it does. Um, it does the the point directly to the right of my mouse, the green point um, at the bottom left of my mouse, and that other purple point on the tire just up above my mouse, and that basically shows the plane, sort of like the ground plane of um those three tracking points, and if you do one on the wall, obviously it's gonna be like aligned to the um wall or the bin. Bin is a really good one because it's kind of yeah, it's a round thing and doesn't really work well. Um, you can see there's even points like from like this power pole to like the wires and the hanging around, but I wouldn't really use worry about them. So uh, basically, what I do is if it, with the cinematic like this, because I actually use this in my edit sun. If I can find that very quickly. Oh, here we go. Basically, I did the tracking here with the element text and um, the two arrows, and I also did that um, just here as well, which is where we're tracking right now with the Joshik presents. And then I just had the um, the sun text animate and track there as well. So, um, all right. So let's just get into this. You want to say wherever you want your text or 3D object or whatever you want in the uh, footage is where um, where you want to select your um, points. So if you want something here, you want to select the points there. If I want something on the wall, like if I want want it like on the window, I want to select the ones in the window. If I want it on this this roadblock thing, I'll select the ones on the roadblock, not that one over there, because I just threw it out of whack. Or maybe I don't know. Maybe select all. Of them. I don't know. Or you can just basically just click where you want it. Whoops. You click where you want it. Right click and create your text or whatever. So um, for just standard two D text in your um footage, you just want to select your points. Right click, go create text and camera. And um, by default, it's gonna like 
put the text like on the ground with the like flat on the ground with your points so you just want to go into your rotation and uh, for me I just want to change I usually change my anchor point so it's at the bottom of the text change your z, z rotation so it brings it around and then you just want to change the x so that'll bring it up although with this you sort of got to probably better if you don't play with the z, the z rotation just bring the x up because I suppose when it's up there you just use your y to spin it around so once you've got it wherever you want it that looks pretty good and if you scrub forward that's pretty much tracked right in place like really well um, alright so that's the text for um, let's say um, you want element uh, like something from element in there you do the same thing you just put those down create null in camera and then I believe oh sorry I actually haven't motion tracked in a while so I might be doing this wrong but I believe 32 nulls in a camera and then you, what you do is you go create layer, another null object no, not camera. null object and with this one you want to set that to 3D and select all the other nulls in the camera and you want to parent them to the null alright so basically whatever this null does it controls everything else so if we go to the front view I believe and let's bring up our title action to say if we bring a line down to here if we bring the scale down you can see all these points start to come closer and you basically want to get them inside these this middle box here and then just bring bring this null back until they're sort of centered in with the composition and then you want to do the same thing with the top view as you can see there's nothing there yet and you bring that scale down even more so you can see them I think it should be right there and bring this one back until the majority of them are sort of all there now what you would do is just get your I think it's X rotation and rotate it till they're all in a line and you want to come down here bring this back and then just play around with that rotation until they're almost in like a perfect line that seems pretty good let's bring that bring this null up and now if we go to the active camera get rid of this and if we just delete this one null and select all the other nulls they're still in place but um everything's like scaled down and it's more like sort of in your composition than like I don't know it's hard to explain but basically it, it just fixes a lot of problems that you'd normally have then once you've got all these nulls in the camera you want to just leave them where they are um, command Y or control Y to make them use solid element put element on there layer text um, in the text is right whatever so I don't know type for tutorial turn the visibility to off so you can't see it then on the solid with element you want to go into custom layers custom text and masks path layer 1 and type nothing happens yet but you go scene setup go extrude and there's your 3D text in Element. And then you can just go and go to your bevels and just chuck in presets or whatever you want. Let's go Paramount. Okay. And as you can see, there's nothing there. It depend depending on the cinematic and your tracking, you might or might not see it. So what you can do is just um just duplicate your camera press C and just sort of look around until you can see it and as you can see it's like um, if I zoom out of here 
I think it looks like the the text is like sort of on the camera, but because we've got a U, there's a hoop in the U, we can't see nothing. Alright, sorry about that guys, I know what happened there. I think basically um, the Y axis, um, if you set it to 360 or whatever, it was basically behind, the text was behind the camera and I had to rotate it um, 90 degrees because it was actually facing flat on the ground. And um, yeah, so I just brought the Y back and as you can see, it looks alright at the moment. Drag back and forth, it's pretty tracked, nice and clean. Um, one last thing. Um, what you want to do, you go scene setup, uh, go to primitives, and go plane. Now you want this plane on group 2, not 1. As you can see, the plane, nothing's there. But we need to bring that Y right back to where it is on this one. And the rotation to 90. Because if you actually look underneath the plane, it goes invisible, which is kind of weird, but yeah. Um, so yeah, you want to have the plane there. Make sure everything is sort of in place. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to hit the material on the plane and go matte shadow. That makes it invisible, can't see anything. But when you go into render settings, ambient inclusion, and enable that, it puts shadows underneath the text because of that plane. And if you just drag the intensity up, you can really see the shadows formed by that plane. Because if we um, if we just turn that plane off, no shadows. Turn the plane back on, shadows. So um, hope this tutorial's helped you out, guys. Um, this is basically um, my recommended way of um doing motion tracking. Unless you're doing um, stuff in Cinema 4D, then I guess you would um, have to use Vuju or some other program. Um, I believe there's a... Um, yeah. See, this track isn't perfect. I don't know what's happened there. I think that was my... Um, when I was playing around with the camera settings. But um, yeah, if you wanted to do um, like work in Cinema 4D, you'd have to use Vuju. But I believe there's a way of exporting the camera data from After Effects to Cinema 4D, so you don't need to use Buju, which makes this a lot easier. But um, I, th I, as far as I'm aware, I think Buju does the job better if you're doing um, really advanced motion tracking, so if you're doing like, like if we were just flying all across the map, like going from here, around the corner, around, like just going everywhere, like I think it'll work a lot, lot better. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't done a lot of motion tracking, so I wouldn't really know. But uh, yeah, hope this helped you out, guys. Hope you uh, liked the tutorial and um, leave a like and just uh, message me if there's anything you want me to show you how I've done. Um, I'll do my best to respond or to make a tutorial on it. And um, yeah, 